Okay, let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. It's week two, day five, the afternoon lecture. We're going to go over media queries. Um, what what is a media query? What are they used for? And um, I think I should delete just that end there. Advanced JS using NPM. That's not necessary. Uh, so let's go over media queries, and you can find the uh, material that I'll be covering here in this section of the platform under basic terminals or terminal basics, advanced topics, media, uh, media queries here. Okay, so I'll be grabbing uh, this information and building uh, code using the code given here during the lecture. But first, let's go through a slide and talk about what media queries are and a quick introduction, okay? So let's go through this slide. If this has any typos, please forgive me. I typed it up last minute. All right, so media queries. What is a media query? All right, a media query is a fundamental aspect of responsive web design. It allows us to define styles that are applied uh, to different screens. So how does your website look when it's on mobile versus how it looks when you're using a iPad or um, desktop monitor? So how do you how do you view your how do you create a website that will adapt to the screen size? And what what's the rule? um that we should follow when creating our website do we cater more to the desktop view and prioritize uh, that as our view do we cater more to the mobile view when i was a student at the dojo what was taught to me was mobile first okay you you make your responsive web design Prioritize the mobile view first before uh, the desktop view. Okay. Um, and we'll get into what that means in, uh, in practice in just a moment. But uh, we can check the screen size that we're working with. We can adjust the style and adjust the layout of the page depending on how the screen is shaped. Just like when we saw Narciso use bootstrap and he changed the uh, width of the screen and the nav bar then um, popped a button on the top right there was a hamburger button to show what was um, available as a, a, a list of links on the nav bar he found that through the button then that was used that that was a media query that bootstrap had built into their code but we're going to learn how to build one uh, ourselves Okay, in case we need to adjust um, Bootstrap's media queries, maybe the, the inbuilt media query with the grid system already pre-built doesn't exactly fit what you need. So I sometimes had to use media queries on top of the, the code I inherited that had a pre-web uh, design using Bootstrap. I had to use CSS and use media queries on top of um, using the bootstrap like uh, format. Okay, so maybe you'll have to use both one day. So let's go over uh, how to use them. Okay, we need to define a few things, the type of thing we want to target um, and the feature we want to apply. Do we want to apply with height? Um, do we want the... Um, grid system that we may be able to create. We're going to talk about a grid system towards the uh, middle end of the lecture. Uh, what, what type of um, value on the grid system do you want certain divs to have based on the size of the screen? Okay. We're going to learn also how to use the browser and use this tool here. This, this tool, see this uh, multi-device tool has a small phone and then a tablet. Uh, 
when we click that, when we inspect our browser, we can go here and then see our uh, website at different uh, at different dimensions, different uh, mobile devices. There's specific mobile devices recorded here. They're pixel width and height. And you can see your website, how it's going to be viewed uh, at these different dimensions. And lastly, there's uh, such a thing called nested media queries. Okay, nested media queries can also be nested within other queries, and that allows us to define more complex styles based on the conditions that we set. All right, so here's an example of one. We have the outer media query, and we're just uh, setting the max width to 600 pixels. And then within, we are specifying for the specific landscape orientation. All right, we can use other features as, such as min width, device width, and resolution as well. We can select those things. Okay, so there's nested media queries that we can uh, apply. All right, so now let's look at the platform, what we have here. So this will be the um, code that we'll start building with. And using the code here, we're going to see how to apply a media query. All right, so I'm going to um, bring up Visual Studio Code. Give me a second while I do that. OK, here I am. OK, now I need to take this code, copy it over. Put an H1 here. Oh, did I? I just applied CSS in the HTML. I got so excited. Um, okay. So uh, what do we need to apply it to? We need to create some divs with these with, with this name here. So we're gonna create a couple buttons. And here we are, button times three. Okay, here are my buttons. And I'm gonna give them uh, some names. It's formatted. Oh, that didn't do anything. Okay. So now I've applied the CSS in the right file, style.css. Oh, I need to link uh, the CSS. And what we're going to start off doing is applying the color yellow to these buttons. And we need to call it a nav button. Actually, I should have named it. So class equals nav btn. And I'll apply it just to the first two. I'll leave the last one without it. Uh, OK, so let's see what we have now. OK, three buttons. And if we shorten the view to 480 pixels, maybe I should increase the zoom here so we can see these buttons a little better. So if I decrease, but I can't, oh, there it is, 480 pixels. At this point here, I can take out a, a ruler. This is 480 pixels wide right there. And if I, uh, this thing is right, let me indent a little bit.
Okay, there we are. Four hundred and eighty is right here. So at this point, the button the buttons turn yellow. Sorry. I want to move the ruler, I think, down here. 480 is there. Okay. So what is happening now is we set a rule here saying at 480 pixels by saying at sign media only screen and max width 480 pixels. So this rule is going to apply when the screen is 480 pixels or smaller. So here's our ruler. We're going to shrink our page. And there we go. As soon as it hits that mark, we're able to change something based on that rule that we defined. I no longer have the pull feature. I don't know why it's no longer available to me. I have to find out what's going on with Zoom. Can you guys leave in the chat uh, one through 10 how well you're understanding the way a media query is written and um, how this one is, is written specifically where the yellow button is, the button is going to turn yellow when it is 480 pixels or less. I have a question. So it says only screen, like why do you have to specify that? Like what what would it do without only screen? <clears throat> Can you reword your question? Like, why is only screen important in that? Like I guess in my head, like what else are you gonna because there's change? print too? Say that I, I couldn't understand. Yeah, so there's print as well not just screen. So what's the difference then, Mark Narciso? So with print, so I don't know if you've seen like screen reader type of, um, uh, if you go to your Chrome, okay. you can look at some websites and your Chrome can, if, your, if the website provides a different CSS for print, Right, because if you try to print something uh, from a website, you got all this other stuff that you don't necessarily want in there. And some websites will offer a print-only um, version of their styles. So that's the difference. There's a screen CSS and there's a print CSS. Okay. And we're saying screen only with this one. This will actually work if you don't have only screen and. Okay. You can so actually get rid of that and make it simpler. There we okay, that makes a lot of sense. And it still works the same. So this is, yeah, and, and since you have max width in there, this is actually desktop first. Okay. Yeah. So setting it just to width then, what is that? in difference than to max width you said it well, was you, no you so you in order to do min uh, uh, in order to do mobile first you want min width in there right. and then you have to go larger than 40 so something like 6 640 okay. would be your min width okay okay right yes and then if you want your yellow to be applied um at the at below that, then you want your nav button to be outside of that media query, right? So that would be your default style, right? Your mobile style. Mobile first means that your default styles are the mobile styles. Right. Yeah. And right. then you want your dot and not dot nav button inside the media query to have just no background color. So inside that media query, you can do the dot. Mm -hmm. You do your dot nav button and just either have a different background color or 
Yeah. So this way at mobile, it'll be yellow. And then a tablet, it'll be purple. Right. Okay. So let's let's take a look at that. So if I let's take away this ruler. If I inspect the browser, okay, and I click this area here, you're able to see your screen at different devices. I'm going to move the dock to the bottom. I'm going to move it to tablet as Narciso just said. So maybe an iPad Air. And the oh, yellow. That, so that's 820. Uh huh. So we want to make it smaller. So maybe a mini. No, that's that's not it. But see here, you can see the dimension of each specific, like specific dimension of each device. What's this? What's one I think that would be matching six forty? Anyone have a guess? It might be one of those phones. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with the phone. A Galaxy Fold. Okay. okay. So right here we got the mobile first yellow, and right. as we expand. Uh, can't. It's not responsive. Let me see here. Oh, oh. I'll switch it to responsive, and that can give us the selected view height that we want. So where's our purple? Our purple should come in at six forty. So I'm going the minimum width. You doing this in Chrome? This is Chrome. So how did you get to this part right here? I need this. So what I did was I'm going to close out and get back here. So here's my page. I inspected, right click inspect. And it's already to this, what I, I can switch out here. Um, here it is at iPad Air. This area here where my mouse is, is the height by, no, width by height. That's the width by height. And so we're checking the difference in the color of the button when we get to 640. Yeah, we just got to move this up here. How you get it to show the dimensions? Okay. Um, well, it already shows that automatically, doesn't it? Doesn't do that for you at, right at the top? I think she click meant that. like how and we got we got into this view. You gotta click that. If you don't if you're not seeing the dimensions, you gotta click that, uh Shakira. I found it. Thank you. Okay. So uh I'm gonna move this rule up. Oops, wrong button. Okay. And now purple is applied when the min width is 640. Yep, 640. Below 640, it's yellow. Above 640, it's purple. Okay, so let me um, go to responsive here. And I can drag the height and width from this point. So we want when the when the width is less than 640, or no, more than 640, purple is applied. Otherwise, switch to yellow. That's the default rule that we're applying. OK, so can we imagine from this point where we can go with this? Think of the grid system that we saw in the bootstrap we can create our own now and say we want um when a div uh, when the width is um at a tablet view and we have the different views defined up here in the platform between 481 and 1023 we want uh the divs to be taking up half the uh width of the page or the whole um, width of the page. And for desktop, 
to have the divs uh, spread out and smaller to a different view. Okay, so desktop is 1080 or 1024 and above. Okay. Um, and let's continue. I, I think we should pause for a moment and answer any questions that we may have. I'm going to read the chat for a minute. Um, please do not read dimension in the chat. Let me read it. Okay. Question. Yes. So this media is is I'm just trying to make a connection to what we've done before. So this is kind of like if statements almost like if you can satisfy this condition, then do this style, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, if it's 640, uh make it, you know, if it's wider than 640, make that the default. And if you guys are curious about bootstraps breakpoints, I pasted a link in the chat. Okay, so let's let's um, um well before we take a survey in the chat, let's let's get a hold of that link. Take a look at that. And then in about 10 seconds, we'll post in the chat how well we're understanding this this um this breakpoint between. 640, how that's the default rule set. We set it to be mobile first. And then uh, when we do reach 640 and below, the default color is yellow. Okay, so go ahead and post one through 10 in the chat how well we're understanding so far uh, what we're doing. Okay, we're going to transition into the grid system, how the grid system works, and how we could take advantage of it. Okay, so the grid system is the way we're looking at it here. When uh, or in practice, we're looking at it now. Here's a mobile view, and we would want our uh, containers to be uh, almost the max width of the screen. It's because the smaller the device is, the bigger that we need the text and containers to be. When we're at a desktop view, we can spread things out. And so that's what we're going to try to achieve with the grid system. It will look something like this, this code here. So let's take this code and start building a grid with it. But instead of using max width, which is the desktop first uh, rule, we are going to build it using the mobile first sizes. Okay, so let's get started with this. Okay, so let's take this column and let's comment out our buttons. Actually, we can delete it. And we're going to paste in our code, new format. Okay, now let's take a look at what this um, CSS is telling us. And then we're gonna have to transition it to the mobile first view. So this class SM0, what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying not to display anything with the class if the screen's width is less than 480. 
So this is going to make it disappear, display none. And here, we are saying anything with the class of medium one will get 25% of the available width if the screen's width is greater than 480 pixels. But we're going to change this here. All right, so how do we target our classes? We need to apply this here to our mobile first view. Can anyone give me any starting points? What should we do? What's the default rule application that we're going with here? Are you talking about setting up the media query or calling a class? Well, we're, well, both, both. So you gotta create another media query, right? Okay. So we're gonna create, we have a media query. We're applying it to the button. Uh, so we don't need this rule for the button. And we want to say display none. Let's apply it here. What is wrong? Is it the comment here? You just need the class name. Oh. You got rid of the class name. Yes. Okay. So what's the class name? So it's the button we're looking for, right? Right. But we're not looking for a button anymore. We're just looking oh, for this one. class here. So can it just be column dot column? Okay. All right, so we applied our column display none. And it said, otherwise make the width of the column 25%. So let's do that. And we have to give it some background color. So let's apply some background color to our body. Our body, what color should we give it? light color i think color um coral and we'll give these columns a color color um blue okay And so we start off with a blank empty page. As soon as we get to this width, let's give it a background color. Our column appears. So even though the screen doesn't go all the way down when you're out of inspector, it still can uh, yeah. pick up. Yeah. That. The screen still works the same way, but when you inspect, you can stretch your width way smaller than you can with your screen. Your screen will only stretch to, what is this? Uh, let me have to take out the ruler. So it's my screen can only stretch to about 330 pixels. So that's what it's used for. And the average uh, mobile is 375, right? The average mobile, yes. What was that number? 375. Oh, 480? 480. Oh. So less than or equal to 480. Right. Right. So now let's create some columns that will change their size 
uh, depending on the view. And let's use the wireframe that we see here as the model, all right? So let's create some divs like this, smart info. And this will be our desktop view, okay? So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create that H1 smart info. And here it is, smart H1. Okay, and then we have a topic with writing. Um, there, that's our topic with, and that's our writing. So let's take a look. Um, we have to change the rule here to display and 25%. So let's let's pause and think about what rules we're gonna apply and then uh, let's answer, let's, well, let's figure it out together. First, I think I need to, to uh, remove that display none, right? That's not something we need yet or at all. Okay, so it's always gonna display, but we need it to change its size not just based on the percentage, uh, but we need to change how many uh, imagine those imaginary columns behind it. How many of those imaginary columns are we going to take up when we get to the mobile view, which is small? So how can we apply this? Can you ask that again? What was it? So the goal here is to get this view, all right? We're using this here. Oh, that's the slide. We're using this here as our starting point. We need to expand the view of this. So we need to say, when we are in the mobile view, let's make the width take up 100%. Okay, so that's better. And let's apply text align center to everything. Okay, but now it applies the whole entire way through. So what do I need to write here to make this column shrink to, let me try to zoom in on that. So small. It looked like 40% uh, on the left and like maybe, uh, I don't know. Cause you use 12, it's 12 for bootstrap. What is it for like regular HTML and CSS? Okay. I, I like that. I like that. So 40%, you said 40% with. And another side, 60%, right? And we need to create another one, right? So, okay, so let's create the second one. And where should I put this second one? So now it ex now when I expand to 640 pixels, the mm -hmm. div shrinks to the left hand side. So where do I put the second div? Be underneath that one. Okay, underneath it. So there we go, applied. And how can we take advantage now of, so now we have two here stacked on top of each other. When we get to 640 or less, they are now stacked one on top of another. When we stretched all the way to the end here, then they uh, went to 40% of the screen, right? That's what we see here, 40%. So I need to fill this area here on the right. So how do we take care of this now? We have to think which divs are going to be 
fun fact in topic one and two. So now let's let's switch up the titles. Fun fact. What did we say? Okay. This is another fun fact. And in the mobile view, we should see just topic one and two. Just topic one and two. So we need to create these divs that are topic one and two that on the mobile view, we see them extend to the width of the screen. But when we're on the desktop view, we see the fun facts appear. So how can we apply uh, CSS rules to fix this now? Any ideas? What if you put the fun fact in topic one in a div and did like display flex like Mark said, so they'll go in a row. Okay, okay. So we'll put both of these in a div and I want to apply that rule I saw Narciso use this morning. So let's see if I can successfully pull it off. So we have this one and so where does it end? When I click the opening div, this blue one here, it shows me the closing one. So I want to go right here and create another div. And this is gonna be another column, right? Because we can think of our page in two columns, fun fact column and the topic one or the topic column. Fact column, topic column. And fun fact and topic one are in a row. Let's let's name our facts as well, even though we don't see that on our page. This will help us get oriented. Okay, so I need to wrap fun fact one and topic one in a div. So let's copy. Oh no, wait. Where does it start? Here. Okay. So let's copy this one. Do you want your other div in there too, right? The topic div that's empty? What's that one? What's that, Narciso? You've got that empty div that's going to contain your topic one, right? Oh, this one here. Oh, I yeah, this one yeah. is. Yeah. So I want to place this in here, right? Yeah, you're right. So I'm oh, gonna... I thought you were going to, I thought that empty div is for your topic one. It was, but then I just I, I guess I misunderstood your question. Then I decided to do this now. <laughs> okay, no worries. So now we're we're placed it in the div and we're going to copy it below. Either way, it don't matter. It's and easier to put your fun facts in the same div so that you can display none on the mobile view and just get rid of it versus doing fun fact topic one in the same div. Okay, so we got to decide how are we going to approach this? We have uh, either rows or columns. They're evenly, we can evenly split them either way. We don't have to decide at this point. Um, I, I'll just go with what it already is to keep it less confusing. So we have fun fact and topic one in a row. And this div here we'll call class row. And we want to copy this whole row. How about we just override this small div at the bottom and we'll just rename the numbers to topic two. All right, let's take a look at what we have just to see what it's looking like. All right, so we have fun fact and topic one and they're still there when we squeeze it uh small so what can we do we want the fun facts to disappear uh when we have a mobile view so we can apply display none right 
This is what we made use of at the beginning to show the div disappearing. So we want to apply display none where. Where and for, well, we want to apply it on the fun fact div. So now we have to, I think, differentiate between. I think you just want SM0 instead of dot call. Oh, right. All right. So, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So we want SM0. Display none. So that's going to be on your on your base style, right? Because you don't you don't see it in the mobile, right? So that's so, going to be up above your media query, right? Okay, yep. Yeah, I was thinking reverse. Okay, this is mobile, not desktop. So let's move it uh, above. There we go. Cool. And then I think you want the dot call on 22 to be SM0 as well. Or, yeah, I think SM0 as well. Yep. So by default, we're not going to see SM0. But when we get when we get to six forty, it'll be forty percent. Right, and that's what we need on the forty percent view of it on the left. Thank you, Narcisa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are, invisible, but we need it to apply only to the uh, fact fun fact columns. Well, we need MD MED as well, MED one. MED one. Yeah. So MED one is going to be just display block. Right. In, in yeah, in the in the in the default. In the more in the in the in the default. We want MED one display block probably. MED. In your HTML it's MED. Oh, right, right, right. Want display block. Okay. okay, and also MED one display none. Uh, in the in this in the. Oh wait, so which ones? Oh yeah, we're not differentiating. So let's do the right. fun facts will be small, and the topics will be mediums. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's that that excellent. So here we are. And this will be topics will be mediums. Okay. I think we're getting closer here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's mobile. This is, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. we're not getting it. So we need our SM0 at 640 to be 40%. And we need to display. So we need to define the row class as well, right? Right, no, no, no. right. That was right. That was right. You want SM0 to be displayed on by default. That was right before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But we need our, we need to be able to, to we need to style the row class as well. Right, right. Yeah, right? that's so what we need to do. Yeah. So the row class by default will be flex, but dis flex, flex call, display flex, and then flex structure call. Yeah, a uh, column, column, the whole. Yeah. And then in the media query, the dot row will um, flex direction row. Yeah, right, so right. row, flex direction row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I think we're missing something else still. So. Let's take a look at our page. So, so far, 
Yeah, uh, we're still not seeing SM0 come up. So we need SM0 display block inside your media query. In your media query. Yeah, right? Um, SM0 right in there, display block. Or not, or not block, um, maybe not display. Oh, uh, okay, so display none. So instead of display none, let's just display hidden. So we don't just get rid of it. Yeah, let's see if that works. Yeah, that changed it. But mm -hmm. now we now we no, see topics. Now we see it. So display. But now this this is great. It's working. Okay. So at the mobile size, why isn't display hidden working? Let's go back to mobile size. In your in your browser. Oh okay. Yeah. And right now, okay, so they're stacking, even though we're saying SM0 display hidden by yeah. default. Is, so that, that, is that CSS correct? We need should, to... we, should we do display none? Let's change that back to none and see if that works. Yeah, that definitely changed something. Let's check it out now. Okay, cool. And then get it bigger. Um, okay. There it is. There we are. Okay. Thank you, Narciso. So glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's create some uh, some borders around everything. Um, let's say. Well, everything's a call, so you could do it in the call. Yep. So I'll say um, margin. 10 pixels, uh, let's see, also I want the outline to be two pixels solid black. Okay, so here's our divs. Oh, and the margin affected it so that it's pushing it. Ooh. Yeah, I would, put, I would put gap on the row instead, put a 10 pixel gap on the row. Yeah, yeah. I I want the row to also have some margin top. Maybe 10 pixels. Yeah. There we are. Okay. Cool. And there it is. So building a responsive website from scratch is going to take some of that handiwork that you saw if you don't use Bootstrap but it's totally doable. And Mark, no, that does not apply to the topic columns because we took that class off the topic columns. I said that originally before you changed it, but- Oh, um, right, right, right. So I'm just trying to make sure I understand the mobile first idea is what you do in the CSS before you do your media queries, right? Right. That's what that's automatically what we, okay. Yeah, that's yes. what we mean by mobile first. So we're designing our CSS by default to look good on mobile screens by default. And so is it normal if, to put the meat? So I guess I'm thinking like in like a production environment, is it going to be too much to put all of this in one CSS file? Or do people normally split it up into different files? Or? So yeah, right. normally you're going to have your media queries in a separate file. Are you serious? How would you do that? You just have two CSS links in your HTML, right? You're going to have your um, style.css and your media.css or your queries.css or whatever you want to call it. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Okay. And then a uh, curious Nancy, so when you write your queries.css, how do you then use your styles.css with your queries.css? How do you Yeah, so if we scroll up in our HTML, let's just put another link in there and we'll call it here in the same folder? Yeah, sure. We'll call it queries.css or something like that. We'll copy, we'll cut and paste all of those media queries in there. So this one here. Mm -hmm. oh, the whole and, thing. 
the whole, the whole, yeah. Cut it out of there and paste it in here. Oh, you missed a uh, curly. Okay. And then in your HTML, you want to make sure that this is the last thing that's loaded. So in your HTML. Uh huh. Sorry, I just was trying to fix that there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So after line seven, you want to put another style sheet link. And you want to link up your queries.css. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Awesome. So now I have two CSS files, one for the mobile view. And this is all the rules applied to mobile. And this here is for every other view. Um, and we can even make a view for desktop uh, versus, um, what is it, tablet? Uh, versus mobile right so you can have a, a tablet view versus usually tablet views are pretty much the same as mobile right just a maybe a little bit different maybe a little yeah uh, mark no i wouldn't i wouldn't do that right so i wouldn't have mobile css desktop css etc so i would have a style.css for your mobile your mobile layout right your mobile styles and then in your query css we would put all of your queries, but you can, I mean, you can, you can get as jiggy with it as you want, Mark. <laughs> okay. So like, um, on multi screen, uh, like website, so let's say you got more than one screen, then would you do like, well, not like what Mark said, but like, would you have like a CSS for the about page CSS for the, uh, contact page or whatever, or would you keep all your mobile, uh, CSS layout in one depends style. on how big it is, I would say. So it depends on how modular you want to get and how many styles you got. Right. Do you want to do you want to style that CSS file that is 1000 lines long or would you rather have four that are 250? Okay. It's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like having multiple CSS files, that don't mess with like the runtime. Cause I keep seeing stuff where they say like you have too many CSS files, it might like do something nah. with the load time. Nah. The the load time is the the weight of the file. So how many kilobytes is it? That's all. Okay. Yeah. So, just uh so for I'm just making sure I understand. So your normal style that CSS is your mobile uh, CSS, but then the media query for the desktop inside of that media, you know, command, you're going to have all of your CSS changes for the desktop. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. We can have other media queries in here. Right. If we were going by the bootstrap breakpoints, then this first one would be actually 768 or no i'm sorry five yeah no 768 mm -hmm. and then you'd have another media query for large which is 992 yeah and this would be where you keep your desktop stuff Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So small mobile by default. And then how do your styles change at tablet and how do your styles change at desktop? I don't know if you answered, sir, but what's the advantage of doing mobile first as opposed to something else? Uh, the advantage is most people view your sites on mobile. So that's where the majority of your traffic is going to be. So that's what we want to style first is the the style for mobile, right? right. That's right. just the idea behind mobile first. And yeah. There's more mobile devices in this world than people. So that's also another reason. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? 
Yeah, I heard that before. They said there's actually more mobile devices almost than people. So like mobile is wow. more likely like you said, more likely to, to get your website on a mobile device than they are to turn on a computer or a laptop. Yeah. Or yeah. Right. Yeah. Think about the portfolio that you might make and how, uh, let's say you link it at the top of your LinkedIn so people can see your projects. They're going to click it probably using their phone um, right before they call you. Or if you're on the phone and say, oh, have you seen my portfolio? You can see a list of my projects there. If they're on the phone, they might just put you on speaker and just browse their phone as they're talking to you and they'll see their, their website instantly. It has happened to me plenty of times. So you have to design your website with the idea that they're gonna most likely view it using a tiny mobile screen. And then you also clearly wanna design the desktop view as well, right? But that's how you can separate out the different views. Cool. And also in uh, answer to your question, Shakira, about like the, the number of CSS files that you're linking, it used to be the BEM style and like the, um, so let's, if you go to your browser, uh, mm -hmm. Joshua, and look up BEM CSS. Yeah, it's like, is should you still be using that? Because I'll be trying to use it from every now and then. Uh, it's kind of outdated these days, the BEM, but these are just a way that you can kind of scope your CSS so that it, you're, you're not naming classes that may clash with earlier classes you may have written. What about, uh, I think it's called Smacks. Is that the same as BIM or is that like more modern? I haven't heard of that one. Okay. Yeah. But these days people are just, they're designing with React these days. And a lot of times what they're doing is using something like CSS modules or styled components, which style your CSS to that particular component anyway. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to do something to scope it like BEM. Right. Yeah. Yep. And you guys will be uh, in the Mern stack soon enough. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely a helpful uh, tool, React. And, and then I want to open up to, oh, go ahead, Narcisa. Yeah, and then if you also look up CSS 7 and 1. CSS. Yeah, 7 and 1. Uh, seven, 7 1 pattern. Let's see that. 7 1 pattern. Yeah, that one GitHub there. Um, get the link there yeah so here you go if you want to split it up with something that's yeah that's kind of the just, system here yep, you're gonna have good. your base styles in yeah. a base folder right components layout for your you know your nav your header your footer your sidebar you have pages home contact so it's it's something that has you know uh that has been incorporated into many a front end developers workflow. That's why I like SAS because it lets you break everything up. That's the way I was originally learning. That's how I learned how to do everything. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. So yeah, SMACS is S-M-A-C-S-S. -S. I think it's very, very close to the seven in one, but they, they call it SMACS. S-M-A-C-S-S. -S. Yeah. This is how you break up your 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 CSS and SAS for doing what now? Please explain again. I mean, you just, just modular. Up, yeah, you just, breaking up your CSS files almost like. Okay. Yeah, so you just so they're modular, right? Okay. So you have so it's more maintainable. Okay. So you're, not, you're not searching a, a huge CSS file for one class. Okay. I yeah. okay. V but it's not hard to find a class using the Visual Studio search. I mean, you can search yeah, the files yeah. at once. For sure, for sure. Okay, so, but it's optional if you want to break up your code into different, and would you see this like at a company level, at a personal project level? Where would you see something like this applied? I wouldn't see this in personal project. You might see it in personal project at a, a lower, at, at not so so drastic um a uh, 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 separation mm -hmm. right that's modularized but yeah so this is like enterprise level okay just want to make that clear for everyone 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, seven and one is basically uh off of smacks. So it's almost the same thing. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Well, let's close out this lecture, everyone. Uh, thank you guys for attending. Um, we have nothing else for you for the rest of the day. So please enjoy your weekend and get some rest before Monday. Monday we'll start our um we'll do our morning algorithms as usual. But what we'll do differently is work on personal projects. So we're going to do that using the agile development style. So you're going to be able to say to a, a potential employer, yes, I've worked in agile development. I can tell you what it is. And then you can talk about your experience uh, working on your project and how you had uh, to do morning standups to explain if you've met your goals. We'll explain what agile is and how that process is but we'll be working this whole entire coming week on a personal project and what it is exactly what you have to choose we'll we'll explain that on monday as well okay so congratulations to you all for passing your yellow belt again super proud of you guys uh let's um have a great weekend and and uh, if anyone else has any questions related to the lecture we should ask now before i close out yeah, this is a really stupid question, but um, so when we're using media queries, do we have to create a separate CSS? Um, Narciso, can you answer that question for me, please? No, you do not. Okay. Because I just yeah. noticed there's two separate CSS pages, so I'm just... No, but if you want to separate it out, this is how it would look. Okay. Um. So I'll have this code available for you on GitHub. I'll have Narciso's code available on GitHub as well. So you can check that out. And this morning's algo, a working version. So you can see how to make that going if you haven't uh, made that work for yourself yet. Okay, there's a bunch of optional uh, assignments. Again, if you're, if you're thinking a, a personal portfolio might be a good project for you, and I think it would be good for everyone here, that way we can uh, design a page exactly how we want it and um, execute that now that we have the skills to do that with Bootstrap and, and CSS that we've learned. Um, look at the platform here, okay? And you can fill your portfolio with a bunch of these optional assignments. There's the calculator, you can build a calculator with JavaScript, HTML, CSS. You can build Pac-Man. You can now build a Pac-Man game using your skills. You can build a ticking clock. This clock would move based on the rules that you would set. And you have this 1942 project. Check this out. You can add these to your profile as projects that you've completed with your skills. Okay, so these are interesting. They may capture the attention and, and a potential employer might look at this and say, wow, this is complicated. I wonder how he figured this out. Maybe he has the skills to do what I need him or her to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out the lecture. Um, and uh, there we go. Thank you guys.